Our next speaker is uh, Richard Vigory, who is the author of Takeover, the 100 year for well, the 100 year war for the soul of the GOP and how conservatives can finally win it. Richard Vigory is a pioneer in the political landscape of the United States. In the 1960s, he was the first to use computer technology in political fundraising. In the 1970s and 80s, his direct marketing techniques revolutionized conservative candidacies and campaigns. Richard Vigory founded American Target Advertising in the 1990s, a group that specializes in helping conservative organizations and leaders sharpen their grassroots work, and now he runs one of the leading conservative news sites, Conservative HQ. Now, where is he? Oh, he's there. I didn't see you behind it. Please welcome Richard Vigory. You snuck up behind me. Thank you, Ann, and uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I uh, jokingly refer to myself as, as uh, sometimes as 003, which means I've been active at the national level of the conservative movement longer than every living conservative except two others. Uh, 002, I, uh, Dr. Lee Edwards of the Heritage Foundation, who I will be introducing uh, this afternoon in Las Vegas, Nevada, when he speaks to the Freedom Fest, and 001, of course, is Anne's mother, the first lady of the conservative movement, Phyllis Schlafly. So um, uh, my cup runneth over today. I'll be with 001, 002, and uh, all of us are going uh, long and hard every day to uh, uh, advance the, uh, the cause of liberty. And I wrote this uh, book, uh, Anne referenced, Takeover, because in my opinion, conservatives for Ever since I've been in politics, which is well over 50 years, as I said, at the national level, conservatives have had their political guns pointed at the wrong target. We've been focused on the Democrats, uh, Harry Reid, Nancy Pelosi, Barack Obama, whoever it might be at that time uh, active in politics. And that's all wrong because our number one opponent is the establishment big government Republicans. And this is a 102-year-old war, literally. In 1912, Teddy Roosevelt, former president, sought the Republican nomination for president, failed to uh, achieve it. Then he left the Republican Party, started the Boo Moose Party, which led uh, to splitting the Republican vote in 1912. Woodrow Wilson's election was less than 42% of the vote, and conservatives have been battling that wing of the party ever since. And sometimes our opponent looks like Teddy Roosevelt, sometimes Alf Landon or Tom Dewey or Eisenhower or Nixon or Ford, or more recently uh, John McCain, Mitt Romney, Bob Dole. These are the big government Republicans, uh, and they are, they're, they're much more in common with Democrats than they do conservative Republicans. Look to the extent that uh, the establishment Republicans went to just a few weeks ago in Mississippi to hold on to power. They will do whatever it takes because they have much more in common with Democrats than they do with us. And they, uh, they engaged in, in corruption and lying and cheating uh, to uh, hold on to uh, that Senate seat in, uh, in Mississippi. Uh, and conservatives are like the biblical Jews who could not get to the political, excuse me, to the promised land until that generation of failed, flawed leaders had passed from the scene. As conservatives, we're not going to get to the political promised land until we get new leaders. And uh, I think that uh, we are poised to do that because I've been involved here, as I said, for 50 years, and I'm more optimistic now than any time in my entire life. Over these last 50 years, periodically, people will ask me, Richard, is it too late? Have we gone too far down the road to socialism to turn things around? Can we still save America? And I've always had one answer and one answer only, and that is things have to get real bad real quick for America to be saved. Guess what? We're there. That water is boiling, and the American people are jumping out of it. Uh, the one thing that I didn't say uh, all these years that I should have, it takes two things. It takes things to get real bad very quickly, 
and there has to be some uh, political machinery there to take advantage of that opportunity. And that political machinery arrived on the scene in 2009 in the uh, presence of the uh, Tea Party. And the Tea Party has changed everything here in America. Uh, when Ann's mother and I were involved in politics back in the, in the 50s and the 60s, the conservative movement rested on a two-legged stool. And a two-legged stool is not very sturdy. And we'd win 40, 45, sometimes 47% of the vote. Very seldom would we ever get 51%. Uh, but then in the, uh, under uh, the leadership of uh, Phyllis Schlafly, Paul Weirich, Jerry Falwell, and others, conservatives began to reach out and bring into the conservative movement the social issues. Uh, so back in the 50s and 60s, uh, the two-legged stool, by the way, was uh, national defense, which really meant anti-communism, and economic issues. And that's that two-legged stool that would get us 40, 45 percent of the vote. Then with the third leg uh, being added in the late 70s, and Ronald Reagan reached out and brought all of those people into his movement. And that was the base of Ronald Reagan's uh, election to the presidency in 80 and re-election in 84. Now we have a three-legged stool, and we're winning elections. We're getting 51, 52 percent of the vote sometimes. But not, we're not governing America. But then with the arrival of the Tea Party, we now have a fourth leg. And we're no longer sitting on a stool. We're at a big table. And it's changed everything. And I think we have the opportunity now to, to govern America in a way that uh, I never saw possible before the arrival of the Tea Party. And by the way, conservatives have made a lot of mistakes over the years. Uh, but in my opinion, number one is that we became an arm an appendage, if you would, of the Republican Party. Uh, and uh, the Tea Party is separate and independent from the Republican Party. They are unfettered. Reagan, when he ran for president in uh, 1976, talked about we need new leadership. He ran against the entire establishment of the Republican Party, the Ford wing of the party, the Rockefeller wing of the party. After, after, uh, remember, in uh, 1976, Rockefeller was vice president of the United States. Uh, the Nixon wing of the party, uh, the entire establishment opposed him. Only two U.S. senators supported Reagan when he ran in 76 and 80, Jesse Helms and Paul Laxalt. Uh, and uh, he said we knew, need new leadership, leadership unfettered by old ties and old relationships. The Tea Party is unfettered to old ties and old relationships. Uh, I spoke in Dallas a few years ago to about 125, 150 Tea Party leaders from around the country. They had gathered for a weekend of training, and I was their Friday night keynote speaker. And so I met with a dozen or so in my hotel room before the speech and then afterwards. I remember there was a woman from Corpus Christi, Texas, who uh, uh, said that they regularly have uh, meetings uh, of Tea Party. They had a group, I guess there were about 3,000 members of their Tea Party. And the local politicians would call and say, we want to come to your meetings. And her response was, great, we'd love to have you come. But you don't speak, you listen to us. I don't have a conservative friend at the national level that I know of that would talk to a Republican politician like that. And it is so refreshing to, uh, to hear the Tea Party be so independent, unfettered to the Republican Party. Uh, the uh, James Carville uh, in 1992 famously said uh, over and over and over to Democrats, it's the uh, economy stupid, it's the economy stupid. He wanted to drive that point home to the Democrats for the 1992 campaign. So I paraphrase that and say to conservatives, it's the primary stupid, it's the primary stupid. Because... Uh, in 2009, 2010, we could see a wave coming that was going to sweep the Democrats out. And if all that had happened is more big government Republicans had been returned to office, uh, we would have wasted the opportunity of a lifetime. Uh, we can see, again, that wave. And it could be a wave of tsunami proportions that's going to sweep Democrats out of office uh, in uh, November of 2014. And that's why it's so important that we focus on the primaries, not only this year, but also in 2016. And a lot of uh, uh, copy has been written by our enemies, the mainstream media, about how 
uh, bad the Tea Party is doing in this year's election.